Hello, welcome to the second video in this series looking at the surface anatomy of the upper limb. In this video we'll be drawing the arm and the forearm, and as always if you want to draw along you can find a link to the images below. We'll start by identifying some bony landmarks and then try and find these on the figure. First we have our medial and lateral epitondyles, and these are the two bumps at the distal end of the humerus that you can feel on either side of your elbow. Next we have the head of radius, and this will be the widened, flattened part at the proximal end of the bone. And then finally we head to the distal radius, where we can feel the styloid process of a small bump at the base of our thumb. Now normally we'd add our landmarks to the figure, but here we have a problem, because our bones are not in the same position as our figure. So in order to match those up, we need our figure to look like this. The arm has been laterally rotated by 90 degrees, allowing us to see the anterior and posterior aspects at the same time, and the forearm has been pronated back 90 degrees, so that we can still see the anterior aspect of the hand. In this new position, we can now see that the medial epitondyle had become anterior, and we'll find it about here on our figure. The lateral epitondyle had been rotated to the back, so you won't be able to see that, but the pronation of the forearm returns the styloid process to its original position. For now let's move on to the muscles. First we have pectoralis major, this large red muscle here, and this will start off with its attachment to the clavicle and the sternum, pass laterally to attach to the humerus, and then travel down to form the anterior aspect of the axilla. Remember, this muscle will be divided into its clavicular and sternal heads, and all those fibres are going to pass towards the humerus. Next we have deltoid, and this will pass over the top of the shoulder, forming the shape of the lateral shoulder, so we can draw that long here passing from the clavicle and scapula towards the humerus, like so. Then posterior to pectoralis major, we can see this muscle in yellow, and this will be our latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi passes from the humerus towards the back, and forms the posterior border of the axilla. We're now ready to move into the arm, and the muscles in the arm are divided into anterior and posterior compartments. These two compartments are divided by this line here, known as the intramuscular septum. And so we can draw a line along here, follow that line down towards the elbow, to divide our arm into anterior and posterior portions. The most prominent muscle in the anterior group will be biceps brachii, that forms that prominent bulge on the front of the arm, and this passes distally to attach to the radius. Remember this muscle have two heads at its proximal end, and they come together about halfway down the muscle, like so. Deep to bicep brachii, we can see the other two muscles in the anterior compartment. At the proximal end, we have coracobrachialis, just here. And at the distal end, we have brachialis, that large, powerful flexor of the elbow that attaches to the ulna. In the posterior compartment, we have one muscle with three heads, and this will be tricep brachii. From this view, we can see two of those three heads. This head here will be the long head of tricep, passing from the scapula down into the arm, and then we have a curve here, and that will be our medial head. All three heads of triceps pass down towards the electronon process of the elbow, so we need to draw those fibres travelling down the limb, like this. We'll now move into the forearm, where again we have two groups, an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. Our anterior compartment can be seen here in blue, these muscles pass into the anterior aspect of the wrist and hand, with most of them coming from our common flex for origin, at the medial epitondyle. So to draw this group in, we need to start from our medial epitondyle, pass to the lateral aspect of the forearm, pass to the medial aspect of the forearm, and then continue those lines down towards the anterior aspect of the wrist. Now we have our compartment, we can start adding some of the individual muscles that we can see. If you're not sure how to remember these muscles in the anterior forearm, 
I'd recommend have a look at this video just here. First we need to add pronate teres passing laterally to attack to the radius. Then we have our two tarpy muscles passing to the bones of the wrist. We have flexor tarpy radialis on the lateral side and flexor tarpy ulnaris on the medial side. Between them we have this muscle that not everyone has. This will be palmaris longus. And then deep to that, the first of our muscles passing to each of the four fingers, this will be flexor digitorum superficialis. Finally, we have our posterior compartment. And from this view, we can only see a tiny portion of it just here. So in order to draw those muscles, we need to switch to our final image of the posterior forearm. The first group of muscles I'd like to draw will be those muscles that mirror the anterior forearm, and these originate from the common extensor origin at the lateral epitondyle. So we can find them here and here. These muscles then fill up most of this space on the posterior forearm. So if we go from that lateral epitondyle, just draw a line along here, and a line along here towards the medial aspect. So here we have muscles that pass to the wrist on either side, Instead of flexor tarpy muscles, they will be extensor tarpy muscles. And we can see extensor tarpy ulnaris on this medial side, and then two extensor tarpy radialis muscles on the lateral side. The shape we can see in between those muscles will be our extensor digitorum that allows us to extend our fingers. And that's going to split into these four tendons here that pass to each of the digits. But those aren't the only muscles we can see on the posterior aspect. First we have this large muscle in red that passes from the arm or brachium down towards the radius, and this will be brachioradialis. This muscle forms that bulk that we see over the lateral aspect of the elbow, and then passes towards the lateral aspect of the radius. Then we have this small group in green, and these are muscles that pass from deep to extensor digitorum, then head over towards the thumb, and these will be the outcropping muscles of the thumb that go on to form part of the anatomical snuff box. And that's it! So if you've drawn along, you should now have drawn the major muscles in the upper limb. If you have any questions or problems, please email me, and if you've had a go at drawing along, let me know. I'd love to see how you've got on. Other than that, stay safe, look after yourself, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Cheers!